Greetings and Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shabbat Shalom. And thank you all for coming to join us. Um, it is a pleasure, as always, to be amongst brothers and sisters on the Sabbath, enjoying our holy convocation together. And I have a word for you, which I believe um, is going to bless, and I'm hoping um, provokes, encourages, and so on. The word today is, is warfare. Again, we're um, moving on into roots, so I'm sure this is going to be a edifying message for you all. Um, we meet here every single week, um, Saturday at 1 p.m., Lascar Wharf, 19 Parnham Street, London E14 7PZ. And um, I announce the address and so on every single week because there are new people all the time checking in, watching our videos, emailing like this morning. Um, there was another email um, asking if we are here every Saturday. So that's why we, um, we go through this process every week. Um, and while we are here, we typically hear the word, go through a teaching, we break bread, we fellowship, and we seek to be in the presence and please our Father in heaven. Um, if you want to get in touch in any way, shape or form, you can do via the website. There is a contact us page or you can email me at hoylondon at yahoo.co.uk. We're also um, reachable um, on social media and we have um, a Facebook fan page which is House of Israel London. You can follow us on there and, and check out the teachings and words of encouragement and so on on there. We've got a YouTube channel which is House of Israel London TV. If you go onto YouTube and just search that name, it will come up and you'll, you'll find us on there. Um, I encourage everyone who's watching online to subscribe, to share, like and comment. It's a very effective way for the gospel of the kingdom that is going forth here to reach different people from different communities, in different areas of London and the world. And you've seen some of the analytics and you've been able to see how far this truth is actually going. So I encourage you with that. And we're also on Twitter, HOI London, um, or at HOI London. So tweet, retweet, let everyone know where we are, because believe um, you me, there are a lot of people who still don't know that we are here. And even this morning, um, people are fellowshipping on their own because they still believe there's not a ministry that teaches the true gospel of the kingdom um, without the leaven, leaven of men. But we are here, so if we can go out and make the effort to get us in front of more people, then more people will know. Amen? Amen. Amen. So again, we have a um, free download for entry-level people, for foundational people, for your Christian friends, and maybe even for you if you want to know more about the biblical holidays. And um, we managed to get it um, translated into Portuguese. I was going to actually say the title in Portuguese, but I don't want to embarrass myself. <laughs> you can ask one of the brothers here. Um, but we've got it in Portuguese. Um, just in case, you know, you've got family or friends you want to share the message with um, of the foundation of our faith, the biblical holidays, the holy days, the feasts of Jehovah. So go along, um, log in, subscribe, download. It's free. Spread the, the gospel of the kingdom to your friends, family. Okay, at the end of the teaching, you'll have the opportunity to ask questions. And again, like what I mentioned and have mentioned um, on different occasions, that's something quite unique. You don't necessarily get that opportunity when you're, you're in church, you get the chance to, you know, to hone down, to develop your understanding and to question what was being um, said if you have a genuine question. So you have that opportunity at the end of the teaching to make comments, to testify if you have a testimony that you'd like to share, 
to ask for prayer and the opportunity to give. And I encourage everyone to take those chances if um, it is so put on your heart to do so. The vision of House of Israel London is to be a worshipping people, an evangelistic community, a discipleship centre, an equipping network and a worldwide witness for Yeshua the Messiah. And this is the reason why we do and are doing the things that we do and are currently doing. So I encourage you to, um, to get behind that vision and to get involved supporting the work of ministry. So again today, the teaching is warfare. It's going to be based on, on roots. So I believe it will be another teaching that will possibly open your eyes to things which, um, which are there in the scripture about warfare and the roots and where all that kind of thing comes from. So let us just spend a moment touching and agreeing in prayer and then we can begin. Father in Yeshua's name, we come together today in the name of Yeshua. And with that being said, there is an expectation that Yeshua will be in the midst of us. We do not wish to come together out of vain repetition, but in accordance to the word that lets us know that your people should spend this day in your presence, having a holy convocation to hear from you. So, Father, we ask that you will speak to us today. You will speak to your people through me and that your people will speak through you to me so we can all receive word from our Father in heaven. Use us all today as ambassadors for the kingdom because we believe that iron sharpens iron. So we've come here today to hear from you. We ask that you will once again send down that bread from heaven so that if we eat, we will never perish. Because we know that man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of Jehovah. So speak to us today. We have gone through, well, you know what we've gone through this week. You know how we have come to be here today. So we ask that your presence, your Ruach HaKadosh, will feed us that bread of life. That your Shalom will fill this place. That if there is a need for supernatural transformation here today, I pray that it will go forth. That your presence, your anointing will destroy every single yoke of bondage so your people will have ears to hear and eyes to see what you are calling them to be because at times we can be like Moses arguing with you trying to resist your will in our lives but I pray that we will all just humble ourselves today we would yield to you today today we will choose who we will serve, Jehovah or the Lords or Baal, whatever is in the earth trying to lift itself up above you. In Yeshua's name, we ask that you have your way. Amen. 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 So warfare roots, let us begin. So I encourage you to take um, good notes. The world that we see today, as we've discovered, is a manifestation of what exists in the spirit realm. Now we know that in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and God, Jehovah, is spirit. So everything that we see in the physical began in the spiritual. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, the angels, the beast of the field, sea, 
and man in his own image. He created man in his own image. So we know that what we see in the physical is a reality of the spiritual. So in a sense, the physical is the fruit of the loins of the spiritual. Now what we see in Luke 3 is we see the writer of Luke 3 going through a genealogy. And what it says, when you get to the end of that genealogy, is which was the son of Enos, that's Luke 3, 38, which was the son of Seth, which was the son of Adam, which was the son of God. So Adam now is the fruit of the loins of Jehovah. What we see in the flesh is a manifestation of what is in the spirit. In John 1 verse 12, but as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. So we see that the first man, the first Adam, was a son of Jehovah. But then we see when we've read the scriptures and we've gone over this through the previous teaching, there was a transition from being the children of Jehovah to being the children of the enemy, the serpent, that dragon, the devil. But as many as received Yeshua, to them gave he power to become sons. What that is describing and helping us to understand is what Yeshua says when he tells people and he's speaking to Nicodemus that you must be born again. Now that's something that boggled the mind of Nicodemus and it's still boggling the mind of people today. How in the world am I supposed to be born again? But as many as receive Yeshua, the word made flesh, to them gave he power to be sons of God. So there is a transition that needs to take place. What we see in the physical is the fruit of what was and is in the spirit. We must be born again of the water and of the spirit to transition from a fallen state that we were born into. So even though Adam was a son of God, the first Adam. Because of his fall, we all are born into captivity. We're all born into bondage. All born into corruption. That is why we need to be born again. From being the fruit of the enemy to be the fruit of the loins of Jehovah, who is spirit. Now, one of the, the things that we're going to see in Scripture, and this is something that um, many of you heard me say many, many times, is that you judge a tree by its fruit. Now, we know that the enemy, he has some children, and Jehovah has some children. And there are many people out there who are declaring that they are born again, putting themselves in the camp of the children of Jehovah. But Yeshua lets us know that you judge a tree by its fruit. So when I encounter people who make similar declarations, that's the process I have to go through. That's the process we all have to go through. Checking fruit, not listening to words, to lip service, what can I see manifesting in your life that tells me what spirit is driving your behavior, is driving your motives? With our eyes, we can't see the spirit that's driving the person, but we can certainly see the fruit. By, your fru by their fruit shall you know them. This is how you discern the roots, the spirit that is manifesting in 
the physical, what one is led and operates by. In Matthew 7, Matthew 7, starting off in verse 16. You shall know them by their fruits. And the them he's talking about is the wolves in sheep's clothing. Now the, these wolves, these false prophets are coming as sheep but their job their mission is, is to devour to take to steal and you shall know them by their fruits do men gather grapes or thorns or figs of thistles even so every good tree bringeth forth good fruit but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit a good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Wherefore, by their fruits you shall know them. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. So... Yeshua, he gives us the application. He gives us the process. And we really need to come to a place, and even for myself, we need to really stand on this word, the rock. Because there will come a time when people will say, Lord, Lord, to him. But there is a time now when people say to you, to me, he is Lord in their life. And because he is Lord in my life, I want you to let me into yours. I want you to allow me to take this place in your life because I am one of you. I am part of the body of Messiah because Jesus is Lord, Lord. But he's letting us know you will discern who is laboring amongst you by their fruits. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils. And in thy name done many wonderful works. And then I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. So what we see here is there's a contradiction. One of them is lip service. Lip service. Now when we go to Isaiah 29... Isaiah, let me just read Isaiah 29. Wherefore the Lord said unto, the Lord said, and this is in verse 13. For as much as this people draw, me, draw near me with their mouth and with their lips do they honor me but have removed their hearts far from me. And their fear toward me is taught by the precept of man. Now when we look at scripture, this is a scripture that Yeshua quotes on different occasions. The context of his quotation is, essentially, you have made the commandments of Jehovah of none effect by your tradition. Well did Isaiah prophesy that these people will honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. So the precedent is in scripture 
that you want to look at someone's fruit as opposed to hearing their words. Through judging a tree by its fruits, you are able to accurately determine the spirit driving the behavior. The spirit being yielded to, the spirit being served. By judging a tree by fruit, you can discern the root of the spirit that is manifesting in the physical. As a result, the children of Jehovah, disciples of Yeshua, will do the works of Yeshua and greater works. That's what it says. The children of Jehovah, Yeshua's disciples, will do the works of Yeshua. And the children of the devil will do the works of the devil. Now we know this is how the works of the flesh are made manifest and the fruit of the spirit in Galatians 5. So the Bible lets us know how we are to discern, how we are to judge, how we are to distinguish one thing from another. Now in Ezekiel 8, um, 28. Ezekiel 28. Verse 13. Thou hast been in the garden, in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was thy covering, the sardis, the topaz, and the diamond, the beryl, the onyx, and the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, and the carbuncle, and gold. The workmanship of thy tabret and of thy pipes were prepared in thee in the day that thou wast created. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth, and I have set thee so. Thou wast upon the holy mountain of God. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Thou wast perfect in thy ways from the day that thou wast created, till iniquity, essentially um, Hebrew 57, 66, injustice, unrighteousness, wrong, until iniquity was found in thee. By the multitude of thy merchandise, which is Rekula. Hebrew 74.04. Now that word merchandise there is merchandise, traffic, and trade. So, by the multitude of thy merchandise, they have filled the midst of thee with violence, with injustice, with wrong, with cruelty. And thou hast sinned. Therefore, I will cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God, and I will destroy thee, O covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. I will cast thee to the ground. I will lay thee before kings, that they may behold thee. Thou hast defined defile thy sanctuaries by the multitude of thine iniquity, perversity, depravity, iniquity, guilt or punishment of iniquity. That's that word there. And then again, by the iniquity, evil, of thy traffic, Rekula, 7404, which is merchandise, traffic and trade. Therefore I will bring forth a fire from the midst of thee, it shall devour thee, and I will bring thee to ashes upon the earth in the sight of all them that behold thee. So we're talking about warfare. We're talking about roots. And again, what you see in the physical is the manifestation, the fruits of the tree, the roots. And this is talking about the enemy here, that covering cherub that was in the midst of the garden. So the devil is at the root of iniquity because he was unjust, unrighteous, wrong from the beginning. From the very beginning he was unjust. Now this iniquity in him manifested according to the scripture in merchandise, in traffic, in violence, in injustice, in cruelty and in pride. 
So Yeshua said that a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. So if at the root of the devil's iniquity is all of those things, merchandise, traffic, trade, violence, cruelty, and pride, then the fruit of that spirit should be the same. This is how, again, when you judge a tree by its fruit, you can determine by what you see in the physical, the fruit that you see, what tree it is, what the root is. Now, when we go to Revelation 18, now we can start making the connection between the world, the systems of governance that we've been talking about, and the root and the tree. Revelation 18 verse 1. And after these things, I saw another angel come, come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lightened with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and is become the habitation of devils, and the hold of every foul spirit, and a cage for every unclean and hateful bird. For all the nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. And the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. And the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues for her sins have reached unto heaven and God hath remembered her iniquities now that word Greek for iniquities is um, Greek 92 in Strong's and it means legal wrong a crime with which one is charged misdeed a crime against God a sin reward her even as she rewarded you and double unto her, double according to her works. In the cup which she have filled, fill to her double. How much she have glorified herself and lived deliciously, so much torment and sorrow give her. For she saith in her heart, I sit a queen and, and no widow and shall see no sorrow. Therefore shall her plagues come in one day death and mourning and famine and she shall utterly be utterly burned with fire for strong is the Lord, Lord who judgeth her and all the kings of the earth who have committed fornication and live deliciously with her shall bewail her and lament for her when they see the smoke of her burning standing afar off for the fear of her torment saying alas alas the great city Babylon that mighty city, for in one hour is thy judgment come. And the merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn over her. For no man buyeth their merchants merchandise any more. The merchandise of gold and silver and precious stones and of pearls and fine linen and purple and silk and scarlet and all thine in wood and all manner vessels of ivory, and all manner vessels of precious wood, and of brass, and iron, and marble, and of cinnamon, and odors, and ointments, and frankincense, and wine, and oil, and fine flour, and wheat, and beasts, and sheep, and horses, and chariots, and slaves, and souls of men. And the fruits that thy soul lusteth after are departed from thee, and all things which were dainty and goodly, are departed from thee, and thou shalt find them no more at all. The merchants of these things, which were made rich by her, shall stand afar off for fear of her torment, weeping and wailing, saying, Alas, alas, that great city that was clothed in fine linen and purple and scarlet and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, 
For in one hour so great riches have come to naught, and every shipmaster and all the company in ships and sailors and as many as trade by sea stand af afar off and cried when they saw the smoke of her burning, saying, What city is like unto this great city? And they cast dust upon their heads and cried, weeping and wailing, saying, Alas, alas, that great city wherein were made rich all that had ships in the sea by reason of her costliness. For in one hour she is made desolate. Rejoice over her, thou heaven, and ye holy apostles and prophets, for God hath avenged her on you on her. And we are finishing that chapter here. And a mighty angel took, a, took up a stone like a great millstone and cast it into the sea, saying, Thus with violence shall that great city Babylon be thrown down and shall be found no more at all. And the voice of harpers and musicians and pipers and trumpeteers shall be heard no more at all in thee. And no craftsman of whatsoever craft he be shall be found any more in thee. And the sound of a millstone shall be heard no more at all in thee. And the light of a candle shall shine no more at all in thee. And the voice of the bridegroom and of the bride shall be heard no more at all in thee. For thy merchants were, gr were the great men of the earth. For by thy sorceries were all nations deceived. And in her was found the blood of the prophets and of saints and all that were slain upon the earth. So there is, what we've just gone through is a passage of scripture that lets us know that A, God's people, the ones that Shema Yeshua need to leave this place. They need to leave because all that is what was described throughout the, tra the, the chapter will fall upon them if they are in the midst of that place. They need to leave because they don't want to be in a place where they're connected to and begin to receive of the plagues, begin to do the iniquity that is found in her. You don't want to be in a place where you know that it's a habitation for Satan, for foul spirits. So therefore you are commanded to come out of her. And this Babylon is a habitation for unclean foul spirits. Its sins have reached up to heaven and God will remember her iniquities. And that iniquities is a legal wrong, a crime which one is charged. Misdeed, crime against God, it is a sin. So this place is responsible for the slain upon the earth. The merchants of the earth are made rich by her. The blood of the prophets, the saints were, were found in her. So there's much confusion. From what I'm seeing, this Babylon is a system that bears fruit in the physical of the enemy who is spirit. So much of the issues that father had with the devil with that fallen cherub in the garden is the same issues what we see manifesting in Babylon which is why the angel is telling people you have to come out of her you need to come out of her the war waged against the saints the remnant of the woman's seed who Yeshua gave authority to is against those who keep the commandments of Jehovah and have the faith of Yeshua. They are commanded to come out of Babylon so they do not partake in her sins or receive her plagues. The rest of the world will worship the dragon. 
So from that passage, you can see that Babylon is economic, it's political, it's religious, military, designed to oppress the saints. Just from just that passage alone, you can see all that. And here are some other passages which might bring all of that together. Revelation 13, 7. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and overcome them. And power was given him over all kindred and tongues and nations. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him, whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Now if we go to 16, it reads, And he calls of all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a, right, a mark in the right hand or in the foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. So this, this place, Babylon, this system that we're seeing is part and parcel of an economic, political, religious and military system that oppresses the saints who keep the commandments of Jehovah and have the faith of Yeshua. Revelation 14.8 and there followed another angel saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, the great city, because she made the nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. And the third angel followed them saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast in his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever. And they have no rest day or night who worship the beast and his image and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. Here is the patience, steadfastness, constancy, endurance of the saints. Here are they that keep the commands of God and the faith of Jesus, Yeshua. So those who diligently keep the commandments of the Almighty and teach their children what we saw last week in the previous teaching it will be bound upon them their hand and a, a frontlets between their eyes that's Deuteronomy 6 7 and 8 and 11 18 they are those who have the patience the endurance the steadfastness of the saints who keep the commandments of Jehovah and have the faith of Jesus Yeshua. They are those who are written in the Lamb's book of life. Now, they are commanded to leave Babylon. So they do not partake in her sins. And that is to commit iniquity the legal crimes against Jehovah and to receive of her plagues. This Babylon is an economic, political, religious, military system. And we saw in the previous teaching, the primary target begins with the children. This Babylon is a habitation for unclean spirits. Which is why we're commanded to leave. And we're going to see, we see this mirrored in the teachings of Yeshua. Jehovah and his children, the fruit of his loins, are not invested in this system. They will bring forth the fruit of following Yeshua. 
So what we can see is with Babylon, is it's an economic, political, religious system that people are engaged in. They're forced to be engaged in. Because if you're not engaged in, you can't buy or sell. The merchants of the earth are made rich because of it. Now we're commanded to leave so we don't partake in the iniquities of Babylon. The trade, the traffic, and so on. This whole system is the fruit that comes forth from the evil one, which is the root of where this comes from. Now when we're looking at Luke chapter 8, we can see Yeshua teaching people essentially about what is being written in Revelation. Now, the parable is this. The seed is the word of God. Those by the wayside are they that hear. Then cometh the devil and take away the word out of their hearts, lest they should believe and be saved. They on the rock are they which when they hear receive the word with joy, and these have no root, which for a while believe, and in time of temptation fall away. And that which fall among the fawns are they, which when they have heard, go forth and are choked with the cares and riches and pleasures of this life, and bring no fruit to perfection. So that if there are people who the seed of the word, the word of God is sown into them. But there are roots or weeds around them which choke the word. That is because the cares, the pleasures, the joys, they're invested in this life here, which causes them to not be able to bring forth the fruit. But that on the good ground are they which in an honest and good heart, having heard the word, keep it. And bring forth fruit with patience. The same patience of the saints. Steadfastness, constancy, endurance. Which is um, Greek 5281. No man when he hath lighted a candle cover it with a vessel, or putteth it under a bed, but set it, setteth it on a candlestick, that they which enter in may see the light. For nothing is secret that shall not be made manifest, neither anything hid that shall not be made known and come abroad. Take heed therefore how ye hear, for whosoever have, to him shall be given, and whosoever have not, from him shall be taken, even that which he seemeth to have. In that parable, we can see that, yes, there are people who receive the word, but there are cares in this life which choke it from, from ever bearing fruit. Go forth and be choked with the cares and riches and pleasures of this life and bring no fruit to perfection. So merchandise, traffic, trade, the root of iniquity found in Satan manifests in Babylon. He has literally built himself a hometown, a community, a network, a system of governance where the angels that followed him, the unclean foul spirits, can habitate. It is a financial, political, religious and military system of governance designed to choke the word in believers through the cares of this world 
and make war against the saints. And we see this happening all of the time. You can have the word, you can receive it, you can have it. But again, we need to be checkers of fruit. If you are a believer in Yeshua, we should be able to see fruit that lets us know you are a believer in Yeshua. Otherwise, you will fall into another category and Yeshua gives us an other categories. There are some that receive the word, the devil just takes it away straight away. Others where the word goes into stony ground, it has no root. And when persecution comes or offense comes, they're gone. But there are people who receive the word, but the cares of this world, the pleasures of this life, choke that word from ever bearing fruit. Which is why we are commanded to leave Babylon. We don't want to be part of the group who don't bear fruit, who start actually taking on the attributes of the system that they're part of. Now we spoke about this, some, some of this in the, the um, warfare children. We know that with many of our, our professions, there are policies which are moving our professions in certain directions. Now, if you remain part of a system which is full of iniquity and hold on to it for too long, you're going to find yourself embracing iniquity yourself. Not only that, because you've held on for it for too long, it may even cause you to not be able to bear fruit. This is why, for me, and for, I know for many of us, we're so joyful when it comes down to Shabbat. Because we need a break from all of what is going on in our lives and in the system. But really... When we come out of Babylon, we can really start thinking about how can we move our lives into a direction where we are constantly walking and living, doing the will and in the presence of the Almighty. Amen. Now, I'm not saying, you know, like many Christians might say that the Sabbath is every single day. I don't need to keep the Sabbath because the Sabbath is all week. I'm in Jesus all week. I'm not saying that. But we... If you're exhausted in the week and you need that rest because you've been part of this thing, which is wearing you out, then maybe, and I'm doing it myself, we need to start looking at transition our lives to where we're continuously edified in the presence of Jehovah. We don't need to get worn out by being um, in any form of lifestyle. That's the way I'm looking at it. That's the, the decisions I'm making and planning for my life, my children's life, and so on. So the children of Jehovah, those where the seed is sown into good ground, they seek first the kingdom and his righteousnesses. They are commanded to leave Babylon. So they do not partake in its iniquities, legal crimes against God. There are many people in this earth who will remain, who will stay, who will get rich by being in this place which essentially will fall and destroy them and their souls. But Yeshua said, there are f the Father knows what you have need of. There are many Gentiles in this system who are going to the system for what they need. But the Father knows what you have need of. But if you seek first the kingdom of Jehovah and his righteousnesses, then all of the things that you need shall be added unto you. So when we start considering how to come out of Babylon, 
then there isn't really anything to fear in terms of what we can gain from being in it. Another example of that, you know, is Elijah was completely ostracized. He had to get some birds to feed him. Or the father sent some birds to feed him, but he was fed. All things are possible to them that believe. So maybe it's a case for us. The kingdom, the kingdom economy has never gone through a bear market. It's never gone through, you know, we've, we've seen the recession and the bear market and the markets are diving, everyone's panicking. The kingdom economy has never gone through a recession. It's never gone through a depression or a bear market. It's always booming. It's just the case, if, if you have the mindset to try and to, to actually ask, so you can receive. Timothy 6 verse 5. First Timothy 6 verse 5, perverse disputing of men of corrupt minds and destitute of, tr of the truth, supposing that gain is godliness from such, withdraw thyself. But godliness with contentment is great gain, for we brought nothing into the, this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. And having food and raiment, let us be there with content. But they with will be rich, but they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare, and into many foolish, lustful, hurtful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all evil, which some, while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. But thou, O man of God, flee these things and follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, meekness. So the love of money is the root of all evil. Merchandise, trade. Traffic, the root of iniquity found in Satan. It manifests in this system called Babylon. Again, this system is designed, according to scripture, to wear you out. To make war against you. To try and move you from a place of serving Jehovah. A place of dominion a place of authority and power to a place where the, the word is choked from bearing any fruit. The cares of this world, pleasures of this life, the deceitfulness of riches will choke the word and make you become unfruitful. We are not to cover the light that make it manifest to all, but make it manifest to all. We are to seek first his kingdom and his righteousnesses and all the things we need shall be added unto us. And I know that something like this is certainly a challenge. But we know that the wealth of the wicked is stored up for the just. We know that the earth is his and the fullness thereof. We know that he owns the cattle on a thousand hills. And as his children, if we are to seek his face for our provision, then the word lets us know that we will be provided for. So my encouragement, and I believe what we're seeing here, is that as a people, we need to really start tapping into that kingdom economy. What does Father have laid up for me which doesn't involve me being worn out, being overtaken, being depressed and suppressed in this place which he's commanded me to leave? Amen? Amen. And this is, this is us closing here in John 15.
I am the true vine, and my Father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye, except ye abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, ye can do nothing. If a man abideth not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered, and men gather them and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. Herein is my Father glorified, that ye bear much fruit, so shall ye be my disciples. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So let that be um, this word today. Let it be an encouragement to you. Something to provoke you. Because I know that for me, this kind of teaching certainly causes me to think about what I'm doing. Because you can fall into, you can certainly fall quite easily into the trap or most people you know you've heard the term the rat race but we we are not rats we are children of Jehovah so you can you can take resources from a place or you can be a resource to someone else we are not slaves and subjects we're supposed to have dominion so many people when it comes down to the sabbath or to the feasts need to now ask permission from pharaoh please master please let me go so i may serve jehovah there's a new pharaoh in town and we sort of need to come to the place where we don't have a Pharaoh. We have a Father in heaven who we serve. Amen? Amen. Glory. Is there a, a, any questions or comments about the teaching today? Yes. feel for the first time um, that everything's going to be okay. You know? Amen. And um, I, just to bring it just on that new level like that, I just think that a teaching like it's very, very important uh, for us to, uh, to, 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 to not worry about things because we actually really do have a father that cares um, mm. enough to have made a way for us to um,
um, the announcement of life, um, it's always been a, a, a wonder to me because um, in some parts of, of scripture you, you hear um, it mentioned about the, the, the book of life and then there's the, the land book of life. Now my question is, is it the same book or is it the same book with two sections? Uh, those that who come into the earth are, 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 are mentioned in the book of life, but then there's a land section of those who follow the lamb and keep the commandments of the Father are in that section. Uh, that's really my current understanding, but I don't know if um, it's actually the one book. Yeah. Or is there two separate books? Mm. With two, or one book with two sections. But that maybe you can't look for it today, but you know, if you can look into it for me, I'd appreciate yeah. that. Um, so yeah, so I, I just wanted to, to just to leave you with that really. Okay. So Matthew over there in chapter 15, yeah. it said that Jesus said that, uh, that Isaiah's prophecies about yeah, the, the, the verse in Matthew 15. Matthew um, yeah, the prophecy about they draw near to me with their lips. Yeah. Do you know um, what verse? 15 verses 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Yeah. Yeah. Teaching for commandments, the doctrines. Or teaching for co doctrines, the commandments of men. Okay. Um, in in terms in terms of in short, in terms of answering that question, I can only point to scripture. You can spend time going back, going forth, trying to answer. It's very difficult. All you can go from is scripture. Um, and let me find it. It's in Revelation verse 20. Or chapter 20, sorry. Revelation chapter 20. And I'm looking for it. Um, in verse 11, I'll read from. And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from, though, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were open. So there's some books that are being opened here. And another book was open, which is the book of life. So there's some books that are being opened, and then there is the book of life. Now, from what is being um, said here, I can only presume the book of life is the same, self same book as the Lamb's book of life. I can only make that presumption. But it does say that there are books... And I, I, I'm trying to think of what teaching it was where we sort of touched on this a bit more. But we know, I'll carry on reading before I go off. And I saw the dead, small and great stand before God and the books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And again, the, the sea gave up the dead which were in it, the death and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them, and they were judged every man according to their works. And, a, and death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is, this is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. So you can only... From that, you can only presume that the Lamb's Book of Life is the self-same book 
as in this chapter, which is called the Book of Life. But that doesn't mean that other books are opened. I don't know how that judgment procedure works because it's not written. But when we go back to, I believe it's in Revelation 14, where it talks about whosoever is not written in the Lamb's Book of Life will be cast into the lake of fire or hell or however it words it, I believe them to be the same books. That's the presumption I can make from Scripture. I don't believe there's one book and there's two parts. I just believe there's the same book, unless anyone can build upon that and show me something else which is contrary to what um, I've sort of said. No, I, th I, think, I think it just, on your part, it requires um, just some more study. Um, I can't um, answer um, that question 100%. I can only show what is written in the scripture and make the connection. They've, they've got two names, but it seems like they're doing the exact same thing. So for me, they're, they're the self-same book. Exactly. Yeah. Is there any other comments or questions? Or testimonies anyone would, would like to share? Okay. Um I, I want I wanna share like a, just a quick a quick testimony. Um one of the things that um I, w I was just cruising on Facebook as you do. Um, one of these days and someone you may have seen it said that for for x y and z amount of time that, and they're a follower of messiah that they was using a toothpaste that um, has shellfish in it i don't know if anyone saw that but they you saw it so that's obviously something done in complete ignorance but it's devastating so my question was what toothpaste is it um, because I want to, <laughs> I want to make sure, and I was just begging and pleading, please, Father, please. So for all of you, it's this toothpaste called um, aloe dent, and one of the aloe dent, one of the ingredients is shellfish. So literally, brushing your teeth with abominations, like unbelievable. But when I found that, I, w I, I, I was very greatly relieved. And I, I mentioned it to my wife because it took a while for him to respond to me. And I was, uh, I was just like sweating now um, because please, because um, it's a fluoride free toothpaste. So I mentioned it to my wife and she said, yeah, that's the one we was trying last year. So I was like, what do you mean? Like now, um, please explain this to me. Yeah, but apparently, we use this toothpaste. Um, what's it now? What is it called? What? No, no, no. What's our one called? Oh, our one. We use this toothpaste called Euphemol. It's like this old school box. It's fluoride free and it's like bright pink. Um, anyway, so we we use that toothpaste and. It, they took, for whatever reason, they, they took it off the shelf. So we was like, what are we going to do? And this was last year. So we was looking for fluoride-free toothpaste, and we, and we bought that. Um, but when I, when I was using it, I hated the taste of it. And this was like the first time I used it. I was like, this is disgusting. I'm not using this. This is horrible. 
Um, and I, I don't know what, what I was using after that, but what did I use after that? Did I, water? So we was using this toothpaste and I, we, I couldn't get down with it. So we, we stopped using it and was using something else. And then what happened, um, which, is, which is amazing to me, is that a, a, a day after or something like that, my wife opened the lid and the lid, inside the lid, it was full of mold. So it was full of mold. So, and this is unbeknown to me, um, what's in it. So the, the, it was just like, we have to just get this out of my house. That's disgusting. I don't even like the taste. And now the lid is covered in mold on the inside. You know, so we just got it out of our house. But um, the reason why I wanted to share that with you is that sometimes you, you do things in your life out of ignorance. But... Even in a state of ignorance, Father has got your back. You know, he is there to preserve and protect and guide you and keep you. So even when you're part of this system which is designed to pump you with all kinds of stuff which is ungodly, in that situation, for me, he was there to sort of say, you know, I've got your back. I'm going to get this out of your house as quickly as possible and you can move on and try something else because this is terrible. So that's just what I wanted to share with you. So if you've got aloe dent in, <laughs> in, your, in your tooth cabinet or your medicine cabinet, um, I encourage you to get rid straight away. Hallelujah. Is there any prayer requests before we um, close? Okay, let's, let's, let's pray. Father, in Yeshua's name, we, we thank you. We thank you for your word today. We thank you for everything that is written for your people. We thank you for your instructions. Knowing that they can put us in conflict with the people and the world around us. But you said that we should choose that straight and narrow road. So we expect things to get narrower and narrower as we walk before you. But we pray that you'll give us the strength, the endurance, the steadfastness, the patience of the saints so we can walk this walk with courage, with boldness, so we can be a light to others who desire to break free from their shackles of bondage. Help us, Father, to remove your light from under a bushel. And place it in a place where everyone can see. Father, I pray that you will continue to provoke us to good works. Because we know that is how your name will be glorified in the earth through your ambassadors. Put us in positions, Father, where we see and can discern doorways of opportunity that is opening before us so we can minister the gospel of the kingdom, so we can bear good fruit for you. We ask that your Holy Spirit, in the name of Yeshua, will permeate our lives will enter in and remain in the temples that you have built for us, our body. If there be any uncleanness in us, any defilement in us, blemishes in our lives, we pray that you will manifest it before us. Show us the areas of our lives where we can improve so we can walk before you in perfection. Father, I declare that we are a holy people. So in accordance to that declaration, allow us to walk. Equip us, Father, with your knowledge, with your wisdom that comes from the word and the power that comes from the Holy Spirit. In Yeshua's name, we want to be free to serve you and give us the courage 
to do so in this world, in this life. Amen. And Jehovah's people, receive your blessing. May Jehovah bless you and keep you. May Jehovah cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May Jehovah lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the name of Yeshua, amen. Amen, amen, amen. So if you're out there in cyberspace watching our teachings online, I encourage you to come down and join us. Join us. Come see your family, your brothers and sisters in Messiah and uh, get in the presence of Jehovah in accordance to his commands. Everyone here, have a blessed week. Shabbat Shalom.